Jesus' suffering on the cross is a picture difficult to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested, and falsely sentenced to death, but Jesus never looked back. He kept going. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way, sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with his blood he shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to his cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And his blood is our ticket. Our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now. There's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. Are there ghosts today and were there ever ghosts? Also, the the idea around paradise. Well, you know, where is it? Does it exist and where has it been through through different time periods? So we'll kind of cover that today. And Jesus himself even spoke with ghosts that in the Old Testament time and before the death of Jesus, ghosts could be summoned. So we look at the first first Samuel chapter twenty eight, seven verses seven through fourteen. So Saul and two of his servants seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, so that's a, like a witch, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor, in Endor. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment, other clothes, and went. And the two men with him, and they came to the woman by night. And he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up, who, whom I shall name unto thee. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. So King Saul had gotten rid of all these wizards and, and these kind of people that could conjure up spirits, which was, you know, considered a sin. Wherefore they then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die. So she's worried, obviously, that, you know, Saul's going to kill her, trick her, and get rid of her. Verse 10, and Saul swears to her by the Lord, saying, as the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Then said the woman, Who should I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou, for thou art Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. So spirits is what she called them. And he said unto her, what form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And he st stooped with his face. to the And so this is Saul's reaction. He summoned up the ghost of Samuel. So you could at that time summon him up. So where, so where was his ghost? He is not up in heaven. He's down in what's called paradise. And if you look at the definition of paradise, it's one of them is an intermediate place or state where the souls of the righteous await resurrection and the final judgment. So they're not in heaven with God. They're in a resting place in the earth, across from hell, separated by a gulf, by a great gulf. But Luke 16, 26, and in hell he lift up his eyes. So this is someone who died and was in hell. This is uh, being in torments and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in the bosom. Lazarus was a poor man. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. So basically he's burning in hellfire 
and even just a little bit of water would be great, for I am in torment in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. So so Abraham couldn't come over or send Lazarus over because of this great gulf that separated hell, the torment of hell, and a place called paradise, which was which was wonderful. So they that would which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither. Verse 27, Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, to Abraham, that thou would send me to my, send him to my father's house, that's Lazarus, for I have five brothers, that, that he would testify to them, lest any of them would come to this place. So he basically doesn't want his brothers to go and, and deal with hell and torment. And Abra- Abraham followed, said unto him that if they didn't believe Moses and the prophets, you know, then why would they believe Lazarus, so basically, to, to refuse to do it. So you know, there is a, there was a place, but when people talk of paradise, they often think it's up in heaven. In the Old Testament, before Jesus died on the cross, it was, it was in the ground, and this clearly shows that. Jesus also spoke with ghosts, and so after six days, Jesus, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into the high mountain, and he was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun. And his raiment was white as light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Those are the spirits. They had died a long time ago. Moses and, and Elias, Elias was not alive when Jesus died. They, they were historical you know, figures in the Bible, but they certainly weren't alive. The question becomes, what happened? Jesus went down with the keys to hell, opened up paradise, announced who he was, the Son of God, and, and he died for the forgiveness of their sins. It's a holding place because they weren't seen clean yet. They weren't completely resurrected in their new bodies. When Jesus died, they received their new bodies to be resurrected and come come up. We'll look at that. So here's when Jesus is dying. Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice, yielded of the ghost. So this is where Jesus died on the cross for our and shed his precious blood, all of it, for our sin. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. So there's a great earthquake, basically. And the graves were opened, in verse 52, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. These resurrected Old Testament saints that Jesus loosed out of paradise met up with their body, and they were able to go into Jerusalem, the holy city. Moses and Abraham and other people that were famous historical figures coming back and back into Jerusalem before they descended into heaven. That's what happened. What happened to paradise after they resurrected? Well, paradise now went into up into heaven, the third heaven where God resides. So paradise, there is an empty paradise across from hell right now. So if you die in the church age, your spirit goes straight to God. So let's, let's look at that. Second Corinthians chapter 8, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So you, there are no ghosts wandering around. You cannot go to a witch and conjure up a ghost. If you do conjure something up, it's probably, it, it could be a, it could be an evil spirit. It could be, it's not somebody that was a person. If you, you're either go to heaven or hell right now in the church age, it could be a demon, it could be a, the spirit of a fallen angel, but it certainly can't be a loved one or something like that. Like you saw, uh, Saul conjure up Samuel in the Old Testament. You can't, you cannot do that today. And that's because Jesus' precious blood, when you die, your soul goes to heaven, your body goes to the grave, and called the tribulation saints, they will reside in paradise, I believe. It will be reopened, because it does show them in the ground. So we can look at that. And when he opened the fifth seal, and I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried out with a loud voice, saying, How, how long, O Lord, and holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell? On the earth, so the people here that have died during the tribulation, their souls are under the altar, in in where under the third temple, so in the ground, which which would sort of mean that they're probably in paradise, and they're asking when will when will you know will we be avenged? So I hope this message was a blessing and answers that question. Are there ghosts?